So it's the beginning of May already and we've seen a lot of sneaker releases. May's gonna be a really big month. April was a little bit slower and I wanted to cover this month's flips or flops. What is going on guys, Hass here, CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of when my videos go live. This is a series that I started last month Trying to figure out the names, shout out to you guys that actually left comments and said call it flips or flops instead. Kind of makes more sense of what I call it. Basically it's a monthly recap of last month's sneaker releases. There's a ton of them that happen, they come and they go, and you forget about them. So I just figured this would be a fun way just to recap what happened in the previous month. Note that the prices of the resale definitely go up and down month to month, year to year. They obviously fluctuate quite a bit. If you guys also want to see me add on my future predictions for the next month, I can add a little section of that at the end of the video. But leave a comment and a thumbs up if you guys want to see some of that. It's hard to do though, honestly, because there's so many different shoes that just surprise drop and you just have no idea. So it's really impossible to guess all of the sneakers coming out. Half the time the dates fluctuate anyway. But in this video, I'm going to be covering the resale winners first and then the resale flops. The resale winners is a real small list, the resale flops, the list is pretty extensive. So first up, the Travis Scott ones dropped for the second time on Travis Scott's own website for his birthday. Talk about a way to end the month. Those things are still selling for a crazy amount of money, um, close to $800, $1,000 or more. But as you know, those are going to be dropping actually in May. So the resale is going to be going down significantly. I'm hoping to the 600 range, but honestly, you just really never know. It's a high demand shoe and it has a lot of hype behind it. It's a shoe that I definitely want just because I like brown Jordans and stuff like that. But uh, but if I don't get it at retail, I'm not going to be buying it at resale for over 500 bucks. It's just, if you think about it, $500 might seem like a great deal because the shoes were reselling for close to $2,000 last month. But then you think about it again and you're like, it's still $500. Like, why would I spend $500 on that one pair of Air Jordan 1s? I personally don't think it's worth it for anything more than that, but that's just my two cents. The lowest ask at the time of this video is like $728. So pretty crazy. Uh, but definitely a huge roller coaster because of the larger release and expect that roller coaster to go even further in May. Next up has to go to the Shanghai Air Max 97s, the Kaleidoscope theme. Uh, I can't believe those ones are selling for so much. Those ones are selling in the fives in some sizes, which is crazy to me. It was the On Air collection that dropped. I actually got the Seoul Korea ones and the Air Max ones. Um, and I really like those two and they're staying in my collection, but I could not believe the hype on the Shanghai pair. I honestly didn't even try to get the Shanghai's because it just wasn't an attractive shoe to me and one that I was even going to try to get. But that is the one that definitely jumped to the top of the resale list for that Air Max collection. So if you guys got lucky on those ones, they're definitely worth their weight right now. Curious to see over time if they're going to go up or down, but at the end of the day, I like all of the shoes in that collection. And the next resale win and also a sleeper of the month is this New Balance 997S Bodega. It is a collaboration with Bodega. New Balance has kind of been off the radar. They had this collaboration. It blew up. Resale prices are going for upwards of $550 for the shoe. Lowest price is $350 right now as of the time of this video, but that's a crazy amount of money. It says the shoes retail at $160, which seems really, really low for a pair of 997s. I think usually they're like upwards of $180, $190, but Regardless, huge resale market on those ones, uh, probably a very limited release at the end of the day. It's still kind of cool to see New Balance gain some hype a little bit again. And if you didn't see, I do have the brand new 990 V5s and I will be doing a detailed video on these, so subscribe to my channel to see that soon. Shout out to Hibbit Sports for uh, the hookup on these. The next resale win and one of the uglier sneakers to a lot of people at the beginning of the month is the Air Susan 1s and it is the Air Max 1 from the Missing Link movie. I think they look really dope. The highest price is $400 on those right now. Lowest is $280, but retail at $170. They actually released twice this month. One of them was a kind of more of a secretive drop from the Lakia Studios or whatever website, and then they also dropped on Nike sneakers. Cool looking collab though. I need to see the movie from The Missing Link. Still haven't watched it, but I love everything that that studio does. I would honestly probably just keep a pair if I got them at retail, but I didn't, so unfortunately for me. Um, but I do like the fact that this is the very first time that the studio has released a pair of shoes publicly. Usually it's through auction or through a giveaway like the Paranormans. The Nike Dunk High Dog Walkers, probably one of my favorite ugly shoes to release in the past year. Super, super odd looking, weird, ugly dog walking shoe. It was so badass though, the way that they actually made the shoe theme come together. Everything down to the doggy bag and the poop looking laces. The little spot on the bottom of the shoe looked like you walked in dog 
all in all, the theme of the shoe was just, they knocked it out of the park. It was really, really good. And it's cool to see some uh, general hype around Nike SBs again. Those ones are reselling for a little bit of money, not a ton. Retail was only 110. The lowest price is 215, the highest price is 286. $100 profit roughly in between there if you were going to try to sell them. But but that's another pair that I really wanted just for myself. I'm a big Dunk fan, so I would have definitely liked to see those in my collection. But I have a bid out there, and if the prices go low enough, maybe somebody will accept it, and I'll actually get them for pretty cheap. But as of right now, the prices are staying around 200 plus. So the next sort of win is the Fear of God Air Raid inspired shoes with the uh, the little cross straps on them. Uh, highest price on those ones are 350 The lowest is 200 Retail was 190 though, so at the end of the day, Depending on the size you got, you're not going to make any money. Some, you might make a little bit of money. But uh, I think that it is an interesting looking shoe. I wanted to see it in person. I definitely dig the 180 pocket on the bottom. It's kind of like a new revision of two different sneakers from back in the day, the 180s and the Air Raids. So kind of cool, but also I, I just really wanted to see them in person. And I definitely am more interested in the black pair that's going to be releasing, I think, in April. And the last one on my list goes to the Donald Glover Nizza's specifically it's kind of a win and a loss at the same time depending on your size again if you have a bigger sizes or select sizes they're selling for over double retail other sizes are just selling for just a little teeny bit over retail so it did depend on the size that you got on those but i actually really like that shoe i think it's a great collaboration continentals and the other pair did not do as well in the resale market not as high of a demand but Nonetheless, they both look really good, but the Nizzas are my favorite out of the three in the collab. So those are the resale winners that I found, but honestly, if you guys know of other ones that happened through the month that released in April, leave a comment in the comment section, as well as any flops that I don't mention in the list coming up. Starting off with the resale flops goes to the Atmos Nike Air Max Lite 2. Definitely not a shoe that a lot of people were interested in. They're selling for under retail right now. The lowest price on them are $145 that you can buy them depending on your size. The highest bid out there is $175 for some sizes and the retail on them were a little bit higher. So it's just a shoe that just, it looks kind of cool. It's an Atmos collab. I remember seeing it at ComplexCon and, and liking the shoe, but at the end of the day, it wasn't a model that I personally knew back in the day or loved. And there wasn't a lot of storytelling about that model. So because of it, I think that the shoes are kind of lost in translation. The shoe looks really dope though, and it's one that if I saw a Nike clearance, I'd probably scoop it up. The KD12 Day 1, it's the black colorway. The first one, the 90s Kid, actually released this month, a month late. There was actually a resale on the 90s Kid one until the massive drop, and then now it's gone down. But I did actually score the 90s Kid from the Sneakers app. Um, it was really easy to get, so I'm going to be doing a review of those when I get in. But the Day 1s are selling for well under retail, $20, $30, $40 under retail. Retail is $150. But I am curious to try out the KD-12, so it's something that you guys will be seeing on my channel. Did you guys pick up the KD-12s yet or not for casual or for performance? Um, leave a comment in the comment section. Traditionally, KDs run a little bit too narrow for my feet, but every single year I try to buy them anyway. This year's no different. Another resale flop is the Air Jordan 14 Rip Hamilton. I don't know why they call them the Rip Hamilton, um, but the Candy Canes or Ferrari Reds. A lot of people were flaming me for calling them Ferrari Reds, but that's what I knew of them as way back in the day when I bought the original pair. The resale on those are going around $200, so it's not a huge flop. You might be getting your money back, you might be losing 10 bucks on them. At the end of the day, it's a great shoe. It's the classic quintessential Air Jordan 14 colorway, in my opinion. 14s are getting a lot more love and hate in 2019 thus far. We've seen images of the Supreme 14s with the studs all over them and everybody's hating on those, but everybody's gonna jump in line to buy them as soon as they drop, I'm sure. And then also the yellow Ferrari color, uh, that is going to be dropping later this year. Actually looks really dope, but we'll see how it ends up turning out. I remember going to Riff LA like a couple years ago and they had that yellow sample. Back in the day, I'm curious how it stacks up to the one that's actually releasing, but definitely a colorway that's generated a little bit of buzz. But the OG colorway of the 14 holding its ground on the resale market, but not going to make you any money, which means it's a great opportunity to buy those shoes if you missed out on them on retail. Just wait it out. Hopefully you can get them for under retail even better. Next up, the Adidas ZX4040 Carbon. Huge mouthful. I believe those were $300 or $350. Kind of a hefty price tag on those. And the resale market's not really feeling them. They're selling for close to $300 or so. So again, depending on the sizes, you might make a couple bucks. You might lose uh, $20, 30 40 bucks on those ones. I think that they're a cool shoe. That colorway, I'm not feeling though. I actually sold my pair. I'm waiting on a new colorway because I like the original colorways of those. The ones that had a little bit more pop. This one was a little bit too muted for my taste. But um, I'm definitely curious to see what happens with that in the future. And if you guys pay attention on my channel, I'm going to be doing a 4D in mud uh, video that's going to be kind of hilarious to watch. So yeah, I mean like straight up covered in mud. It's going to be uh, ridiculous. But look forward to that video in the next week or so. Another Supreme fail, Vans, uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, Supremes. Those are going for close to retail as well. 
Uh, maybe a little bit less in retail, depending. But retail was pretty low, $120 or so. That collaboration was interesting. I actually got the hoodie from the Jean-Paul Gaultier collection. I wanted the cologne with the Supreme Box logo across the Mayo cologne, but I missed out. I'm a huge cologne head, if you guys didn't know, so I love uh, my fragrances. And I actually had the Jean-Paul Gaultier from back in the day. Um, anyway, but I missed out on the new one and frankly, it's not really worth paying for the extra just for the spray bottle because I You could just buy the regular fragrance for cheaper But at the end of the day, that's what Supreme's good at and upselling you to have their fancy little box logo uh, on their products But the Supreme hype didn't really work and hasn't been working on more footwear This is case in point the new vans that ended up dropping next up the Air Jordan 1 black crimson tint this black and pink colorway is one that actually was a resale flop and Part of the reason why is because of the mass uh, release. It was such a huge release that uh, a lot of people weren't feeling the shoe all of a sudden. So some sizes are higher than retail, some are lower. Uh, again, a great opportunity if you're trying to get a pair and you missed them at retail, you can get them on the open market for close to retail. So it is definitely a win for those people trying to get the shoe. I personally like it. I think it looks great and I'm keeping a pair in my collection. Another flop goes to the LeBron 16 Martin. Uh, I remember that show from back in the day. You guys might be way too young, but Martin Lawrence was hilarious and I feel like maybe they just made too many pairs for people that actually care or to generate the hype that was probably needed for that colorway. The highest price in that one's listed at 280 for a 6.5 but honestly I don't think they made a 6.5. Uh, they're selling for around 180 bucks. And another flop that was shocking but also at the same time not because of the saturation and that's the Air Jordan 11 in the snakeskin colorway, the blue snakeskin. Um, the low top version of the Air Jordan 11 with the snake skin is an original colorway and I feel like that one, because they mass released them to every single chain across the US, I just don't think that the hype was there behind the shoe. And that's definitely one that I'm going to scoop up if I can see them at the outlets. It's just a great colorway. It's just one that's kind of slept on right now. And I think that that's going to be a good one, especially coming into summer. It's a great shoe to wear. So definitely one that is on my radar for the open market. but. Uh, you can definitely buy them at retail pretty much anywhere right now still. Next up, the Bape and Neighborhood collab with the Adidas POD S3.1. Originally when I was gathering my stats on this stuff, the prices were a little bit lower. So technically, I guess this is a resale win. The resale is pretty low though, but considering the PODs you can get for like 40 bucks, depending, and getting a collab with the Bape logo on it and a Neighborhood collab, now it's like $300 close to. So, I mean, that's showing you the hype and the power of the brands if they release limited quantity stuff. Uh, for the aftermarket it definitely can generate hype no matter what the model could be so there's a couple more still to cover the fog mocks are terrible looking i did an unboxing of those if you guys will see that soon or if you haven't seen it already but uh, not a fan of the mocks i just think they look terrible resale definitely dipped on those ones as well you can't get your money back on those the nike adapt bb in the dark gray selling close to retail if not a little bit lower as well i feel like that market kind of is really going to be just for the consumer market not for the resale market but i'm glad to see nike actually expanding the um, amount of pairs that are releasing so other people can try the technology for those that actually want to try it out. Air Jordan 13 cap and gown, not a lot of talk on that one. It didn't show up on the sneakers release calendar until the week of, and uh, that one suffered tremendously as well. The price point didn't help either. I think it was like $200, so a little bit too high. Uh, resale is under uh, retail right now, so it's a great time to buy. If you're trying to buy them, you can get it for under retail. Nike was actually supposed to send me a pair of those and they never followed through, so Go figure, kind of a bummer. I was actually, I was really hoping to see those in hand though, but resale is definitely not uh, there for those ones. And the last one that I wanted to mention is the Yeezy Boost 700 analog colorway. Yeesh, those ones, I mean, I, we had the salts already, so do we really need an analog? I don't really know, I feel like it's too similar. I feel like everybody knows that it's too similar to every single tone that we've seen from every Yeezy that's dropped from the 500s, the 350s, and sevens and whatever else it might be like they're all very very similar we get it so hopefully they start doing some more things with different colorways i did end up buying a pair though so i do have a pair coming because i am going to do a customization on a pair i think i'm going to dip dye in black i don't know i have some new dye though that i'm going to try out that somebody suggested that will maybe make the color stick a little bit more but uh but expect a custom video on that uh pretty soon and i got them for under retail um, because i had a gift card so for me it was a justification that i could justify but that is this uh month's recap what do you guys think do you guys like the series is it fun to see or not what suggestions do you have to make this series a little bit better and do you guys want to see some future predictions of other shoes coming out in the next month that's going to be coming up some people were suggesting to do that i don't want to do the exact same video that everybody else is doing though but hopefully you guys like the series if you guys do please give the video a thumbs up uh, i want to know if you guys like it or not so far the support's been meh on the, the series and it's something that i'm going to keep doing for a couple months and see how it goes and if it goes well then i'll continue it if not then i'll just save my time because it's a lot of effort 
to uh, cram all of the details in uh, to the video. But thank you for stopping by and watching. Lots of videos coming to the channel. And have a great rest of the day and more videos soon. Peace, guys.